Oh, how about now? All right. Let me try this again. <clears throat> I didn't hit the right button. Listen, this is this is a shoestring <laughs> outfit that's been put up in a hotel room with a bunch of all right, somebody's turn your stuff down. <laughs> All right, we're going to start over now. <laughs> so we're at the hotel that we do orientations in, in Hurricane, West Virginia. Um, and um, we've got a couple of our drivers in here. So if you hear the peanut gallery speaking up, just ignore them. Um, they've been uh, next door in the Blue Ribbon Bar. <laughs> so, um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell the story of Seth Coberly. Um, when we... Um, um, when we started the podcast or brought Larry on to the podcast, uh, we didn't know, we had no idea that, uh, what was going to happen. Um, the, the whole thing turned and went in a different direction. And Seth was the first person that we hired from that. And it radically changed the direction of blue ribbon. And now he's a truck owner. He's completed the program and he's on staff as a part-time backup fleet manager. So, um, we're going to tell that story. Um, you know, we might as well mention at this point, you know, that, uh, I mean, this time in trucking right now, revenue's up, fuel's down, fuel's cheap, and everything's <laughs> great. Uh, I mean, everybody's having a great time. Uh, you know, we've been watching the Landstar Facebook, Facebook group over the last couple of days, and people are losing their minds over the uh, cost of fuel. So uh, we figure we might talk about that a little bit. Uh, so now that the idiot behind the wheels got the damn thing actually working, uh, Larry, do you have anything you want to add to the conversation before we start talking about Seth? I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to talk. You want I, another drink? I got to throw. I got to throw out a plug here, guys. Okay, I'm going to give you one of these advertisements. Can y'all see this right here? Here, I'll. Go. There you go. Can y'all see it? This is where we are. If we hold the orientation here, I got to give these guys a huge plug because they treat us like kings here. Okay, they absolutely do. And, you know, they give us a great rate. They give us our training room for free. They got the best bar in West Virginia here. Uh, Nick, the bartender, he's like part of our staff now. So, um, <laughs> shout out. We've, to, had, we've had a bar service here. Um, shout out to Michael, who's the general manager here, and his assistant, Christy. If you're ever in West Virginia and need a place to stay, Wingate by Wyndham. And they're not even paying us to do this, okay? So. And really, I mean, if we're going to be honest, we have to thank Mandy Coberly for this uh, because we were staying at the Red Roof Inn. And the, 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 the bed bugs and crack whores and, and meth heads, you know, was a little bit more than Mandy could handle. And she was like, listen, you know, we're going to have to move up. And so we, we searched around and found a deal. And uh, we looked into the best hotel on the East Coast. So, Absolutely. If you're in a hurricane, uh, stop by the Wingate and tell them Larry Long sent you. And uh, there's a whole rack of bourbon that's just for him right in the bar. So I'll share with you. Okay. Um, so let's start talking about Seth. So uh, I believe it was August of 19 when we did uh, the podcast together for the first time. And, you're right. um, you know, I just wanted Larry to tell a story, you know, and, because he's such a storyteller. And at the time, it was just me and him, right? That, that's code for bullshit artists, right? Right. Well, but you had to understand my side, right? Because it, it, that time he was driving, I was driving. We'd get on the phone and talk for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And he would tell all these stories. And I'm thinking, God, this would, this would be gold on the podcast. So I finally, you know, guilted and shamed and begged. And I got him to do it. Well, then when we start talking about stuff, people started saying, well, hey, I want to do that. I, I want to be a part of this. And Seth was one of the first ones. And uh, listen, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this disclaimer out there because when we got together in, in 2018 and started toying with the idea of, of adding drivers and building stuff up, we hired a couple of people. And it was not a good experience for me. And I thought, if this is what we have to choose from, no thank you. You know, he had talked about how he wanted out. And, and he was getting ready to sell it because he was tired of dealing with truck drivers. And I'm thinking, okay, I get it now. I totally get it. If, if this is what we have to deal with, screw this. We're not hiring anybody. And then Seth came along and changed everything. So why don't you talk a little bit about that transition of, of when, 
when when they started calling and we're going, oh, holy crap, this podcast is bringing in really good people. Well, like probably most of you people out there, you know, we had to recruit truck drivers. I mean, just look around wherever right, you are, man. Before you do, somebody's vo volume is up and needs to be turned down. Not me. Because I can hear it and it's driving me crazy. Oh. I'm muted. Is it you? Well, yet again, it was me. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> Listen, we really, really need a production type <laughs> manager. If you all have experience in the in professional broadcasting, we probably ought to talk to you because the guy we got is like, he's not, you know, he got a lot of good things going for him, but he's a little weak in the IT department. So go ahead. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, listen, I'm out here and I'm just trying to find guys to drive my trucks, you know? And, um, it's very frustrating because you all know that, you know, we, you, you just get the regular guys who don't give a crap about your equipment. Don't give really a crap about, you know, maintain your equipment or fuel mileage or, or anything. So it just, you just beat your head against the wall because you get tired of dealing with regular old steering wheel holders, you know? And so I had kind of, I mean, I'd been trying to do this since 2008 and I was just, I was, I was done. I was fed up. You know, I'm like, look, if this is what I have to deal with, you know, I, I'll do something else. This is really not what I, you know, what I want to do is deal with these, you know, these jackwads, you know? So, um, I had kind of, I had, I had a couple of pretty good drivers, you know, that, um, and I had already made arrangements to sell them the trucks that they were driving for me already had, they were already under contract, you know? And then, of course, we've told this story many, many times, but then, you know, uh, Chris puts his little story on Facebook and I find him and, and, and it renewed my, uh, belief that there were people out there that really, really needed help and wanted help. And so, and then I, I, after I hired him and we started this relationship, I find out that he does these things called podcasts and I'm not lying to you when I tell you this. Number one, I didn't know what they were. Number two, I'd never, ever listened to one and certainly never been on one. So, um, it took for, I, I hired him in March, late February, March, mm -hmm. and it was August before he finally convinced me to, to do this. And, um, I mean, I don't know. It was more than a year. You hired me in 18. It was late 19 before we did it. All right. That's true. That's true. And I was, I don't remember the first time I was in Laredo, Texas, the first time we did one. And, um, but anyway, but it, it, it just changed the course of, of, of our bit. We, you know, we, I don't think either one of us, I thought he thought this would be interesting for me to talk and tell my story. And, but I don't think either one of us had any idea that the podcast would end up being our major, major recruiting, you know, tool, uh, not to get tr truck drivers, but listen, we get, we just get special people here, not special needs people, but yeah. people that have special, yeah. <laughs> people that have special qualities, you know? And, uh, and, and the thing that what works so good about it is that, you know, where this is episode one Oh five, I think the average time length for our episodes are like an hour and a half. Yeah. So if you look at that, there's 105, there's probably 150 hours of information out there that people listen to. And then during that process, they reach out and say, Hey, I'm interested. You know, but it just, it just brings an entirely different type of person to, to us. Um, and the very first person that, that that attracted and that in the, in the, in the, the quality of individual that it produced was Seth, you know, and, uh, and I didn't even talk to him. Chris talked to him and, um, you know, Chris told me, he said, Hey, this, there's a guy that's reached out to us and he doesn't really want to do it right now, but he thinks he wants to do it at some point in time. And so we're talking and we're talking and I'm going, Chris, you got to call him back. He's got to do this right now. We're, he can't wait. We need, we need him now. Okay. So, um, Long story short, Chris calls him back and, and, you know, Seth's doing this and he'll tell you, I'm sure, but Seth's yeah. doing this local thing that, you know, was, would have worked out for him for a while. It doesn't, not the opportunity that he has here, but he wasn't in a situation where he needed the job desperately. And, uh, so we brought him on and, and we're like, man, is now, now this is getting interesting because now I'm not dealing with just a bunch of, you know, truck drivers types okay 
Um, you know, I got a guy here that has, you know, has, um, you know, good sense, good, good, good person, good individual. Um, you know, and I look, I always love teaching people. I just hate teaching people that don't want to learn, you know, right. or people that don't want to listen, you know, I mean, even today, I mean, if look, if, if <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we had a guy that I'm not gonna mention any names, but we had a guy that had a lot of experience as a BCO and he crashed and burned and, and he came to us and, you know, wanted us to teach him the, the, the right way to do things. And not one time did he ever listen. You know, all he wanted to do was tell me what he, what worked for him. I'm like, wait a minute, just well, hang on. <clears throat> we didn't recruit you. You came here, you screwed up, lost your truck, came here wanting to learn how to do it the right way. And all you've done since you've been here is tell us how to do things your way. You know, that's really not going to work here, you know? Nope. So, you know, but that's not, and of course we don't do that anymore. I mean, Landstar sends us and bless her heart. I mean, I don't fault him for that, but you know, there's a lot of people that have trucks that are broke down for a few months and they'll call different fleet owners because they want to, you know, they want to continue making money. And, um, we just, we, first of all, we don't have room for them. Second of all, I don't have any, I don't have sympathy for them. And, uh, I'm not going to let somebody drive our, our trucks, you know, where our trucks are safe for people that want to learn how to be businessmen, not go make a few bucks while there is a broke down. So, um, we just don't do that. And the other thing I think is interesting is that, and again, I'm being, I'm going to be a smug ass right now, but every day on the Facebook groups, you know, every people are literally on their knees begging people to come drive their truck, even temporarily while their trucks are broke down. You know, we have a waiting list of people to come here, not temporarily to come here for a year and a half or two years and learn how to be business people. So listen, I'm, I feel very fortunate that we're in this situation, but you know, the, this thing that Chris and I started doing that we, you know, we didn't really realize what the benefit was going to be. Now it is our, um, now it's, it's the, it's the nucleus of our program. And, uh, and we've wanted to introduce some of these people along the way. A few episodes back, y'all met Carrie, who's also a graduate of the program, but she took a little bit. She did the, what we expect most people to do. Now we come here, make enough money to go pay cash for a truck. And then after a, a year and a half, or a couple of years, go become a BCO, which she did. And she's is still is very successful. We just uh, met her down in Memphis at BCO days and caught up with her and she's doing great. Seth took a little different option that we weren't really expecting. And we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm going to say, well, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I won't spill the beans on that, but, but he, he took a little different approach that quite honestly took us by surprise because we weren't expecting that that would be an option that people do. Even this weekend, we've got another first here this weekend. We've got a, an individual who bought a truck and rather than take it onto Landstar directly and become a BCO directly and, and do all the things that people do, that learning curve, and maybe be one of the 38.7% that fail in the first year because Landstar is very difficult to learn to navigate, he decided to put his truck on here at Blue Ribbon and let us manage him as a truck at the same time. And that's not something else that we weren't expecting to happen. But, you know, it's our, it's our win-win philosophy. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, I'm convinced, he's convinced it's the best thing for him because he'll get more knowledge here in a year and a half of being our employee than he possibly could have got by paying us to be a coach or a mentoring uh, type of client. And um, so, anyway, these all are things that we weren't expecting. Um, obviously, they're, they're things that we now um, are – you know, uh, we're, we're, um, seeing what that potential is and, and we're trying to direct our growth, our growth in, in these other areas. Now, you know, a year ago, I didn't really, well, it's been a year and a half ago now. I didn't expect that we would have people that would lease our, their trucks onto us so we could put drivers in here and give, give guys a, a chance to get in the program, give people who have spare trucks that maybe for whatever reason, they don't want to fool with hiring drivers and dealing and being HR people. Um, and there's trucks sitting over in the weeds that now we, now we're driving, uh, operating those trucks and letting people be in the program 
And again, that win-win thing, we've got a driver that's making over a hundred grand a year here at our thing. We've got a truck on that's making, you know, I don't know, 50, 60 grand a year and a truck that was just sitting on the side of the road. And then, you know, we do okay ourselves. So, um, that's the direction that we're going. And, uh, we wanted to let you guys meet Seth, hear his story and understand the decisions that he made along the way. And it, it, some of it is kind of interesting. The, some of them have some, have some unexpected twists along the way. Um, and so I think let's just let him, um, uh, maybe, uh, start telling his story. What do you think? Yeah. So Seth, I'd like you to start. Now, first of all, Seth is really excited to be on this live broadcast. So, um, yeah, he's a really exuberant. Yeah, very, we had to give him sedatives. <laughs> we had to give sedatives to keep him calm down enough to sit in the chair long enough to do this. Yeah. So he's really, really loud, obnoxious. <laughs> you know, type of individual. So, so prepare yourself here, for that. Here's, here's where I think we should start. Like, take us back to, you know, you're listening to the podcast, you've heard what we're doing, and you reach out. Take us to that point and kind of give us your mindset of where you were at. And because we'll get to kind of the culture shock that comes, but but what led you to, to making that decision? Well, um I kind of have a different spot that I want to start first because okay, okay. I've got three boys at home that watch YouTube and I can't wait to get home tomorrow and have them ask me what a red roof and crack whore <laughs> is <laughs> and try to figure out how to answer that question. <laughs> I also remember that the, there's no elevator there and the staircase up to the second floor is about due to get, was, to get yeah, there's going to yeah. be a workers comp claim there. So. Right. Um, so actually, it didn't start with the blue ribbon podcast. I started listening to you, Chris, when you were just the American driver podcast, okay. um, in 2016, um, just looking for anything. That's when I got into the industry 2016. Um, and was looking for any information I could find to come across your podcast and had listened to you for those several years. And I think I had maybe just sent you a, a message asking you a truck question because I knew that I wanted to own my own truck at some point. And I'd asked you a question about a truck and you said, Hey, we've, I've teamed up with this other guy. We've kind of got a program that we're about to launch. You gave me some information on that and said, would you be interested in, in doing okay. something like that? And that's kind of how it started. Um, and then I, it was after my initial conversation with you, the first time I had met Larry was over that zoom interview. Um, first time I'd heard him, we were, he was the first Zoom interview. He was. Too, he think, was. Mm -hmm. Which that, that became a policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you get to orient. So you make the decision. You get to orientation and you get out into the truck. What, what's that first couple of weeks like? <laughs> you know, um, it's we call it now the information bomb that everybody <laughs> gets uh, coming through our orientation, because not only do you go through the Landstar orientation um, and everything that's involved with being on at Landstar. Then you go through the blue ribbon orientation, which at that time was in a motel. For, in a motel, in a motel, in a motel in yeah. The night a, before and after you went to Lance orientation. Two, yeah. two guys, Chris, Larry, and a, and a marker board and hours Pretty of information. Much, yeah. yeah. And about 27 apps to download from Chris <laughs> <laughs> with all different logins. And so it was, it was a lot. Um, getting in that truck for the first time and, and turning that key under a Landstar load was different than any other load I'd ever done before. You know, you hear about Landstar and you see the trucks going down the road and you think, you know, I've finally gotten to this point and it's exciting and it's scary and you just want to do everything you can to not, to not make a mistake. Um, because so much is riding on your decisions you know, yeah. you don't, you don't just have a dispatcher anymore that says, Hey, go here at this time for this one load, pick up here, deliver here. Uh, we'll let you know what you're going to do next. I had a dispatcher obviously with you, Chris, giving me my loads, but they were four or five, six at a time. And, <laughs> and you have to trip plan a week to a week and a half, two weeks out sometimes. Um, and that's, that's completely different than anything I'd ever done before. So it was very different. Uh, coming into the Landstar system, but also the Blue Ribbon system. I know one thing that we noticed about you was, of course, you were very good at communicating with agents. Um, and, you, you know, always did a great job. 
of uh, communicating with us and taking care of the truck. And, um, you know, Seth was, if you can go back many episodes to the chocolate milk incident that we told on one of the <laughs> maintenance podcasts, that was Seth, you know, uh, deal with, trying to deal with a guy walking up to him and saying, Hey, your oil looks like chocolate milk, you know, like, good God, what, you know, ha- what are you, how, what are you supposed to do with that? You know? Um, and it was in January of 20, you started dispatching yourself. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, of course, nobody knew what was getting ready to happen in January of 2020. <laughs> you know, things were fixing to get exciting. Uh, but what about that first four or five weeks of dispatching yourself? Uh, <laughs> how, how do you feel like that? Went? That's that was a whole a whole different experience. Um, I'm a I'm a researcher and I tend to overanalyze every decision that I make. So. I would stare at the load board and I'd see a load that I knew was something that was probably good uh, based off of what you'd booked for me before. And I would stare at it and I would think, man, what, but what if I get over here and this happens or I was finding every reason to, to find a way not to pull that load, if that makes sense. Um, Because I don't want to get myself in a situation where I had to ask for help because I don't, I don't like to, I, I want to do things right. And I want to do it the first time and I'll make a good impression. And when you are responsible for your loads and generating enough revenue for someone else that you're working for, um, that was a different, <laughs> different yeah. level of, well, I, I remember, um, I don't remember the exact details, but I, you know, I remember a phone conversation with us and you were like, well, can I do this? I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, just, Mm-hmm. You know, go you, sure, go ahead. You know, and you were really testing the waters as yeah. you were trying to, to go. And then, so today we were showing some of our new guys an example of what the loads look like in 2020, you know. And I went mm-hmm. back and looked at uh, March and April of 2020, and you were at the top of the board. You know, you were still, you were hitting 7,500. Mm-hmm. And of course, everybody was working their guts out yeah. to, to stay loaded at that time. So, do you feel like, by about, uh, cause I'm trying to think of when it was, you dropped that bomb on us. I think that was close to Christmas. It was. Yeah. November, it was, I think, wasn't it? So it was end, end of 2020. Mm-hmm, it was. Yeah. And you know, to, in all fairness, Larry and I were probably having conversations about the future of blue ribbon that had Seth as a part of, it, mm-hmm. you know, and all of a sudden sometime around Christmas, we get this email that he's leaving. And I'm like, I mean, it, we uh, we both just were blown away. We're like, oh, he can't leave. I mean, what, what, what the hell are we going to do, you know, if the golden boy leaves? And but you had, you had fantastic reasons, and you know, and of course you'd been through some stuff, you know, with with you drove every truck in the fleet. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we we had some exhilarating team runs that we did. Uh, that was, That's a good word for it. <laughs> exhilarating. It was a lot a lot of fun. <clears throat> uh, come and have a drink with us sometime. We'll tell you those stories. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but you get to the point where you've, let's see. So October of 19, so a little over a year mm-hmm. and you're like, I got to go, I got to yeah. do something else. So, mm-hmm. so walk us through that. So it wasn't, it was a lot of things that, that had, accumulated over time like you said i had been i think i can't remember the exact count but probably somewhere along nine or ten different trucks in that year (laughs) that i was in um and i don't i don't pack light because you as a truck driver on the road you start to accumulate things that you need you run into a scenario where you need something you think well I, i need to have this thing so that next time i run into this i'm prepared and I had all these things that I had accumulated tools and this and that. And Chris would say, Hey, I need you to come through the hurricane. Got to switch trucks. <laughs> like, okay. And that it's like moving an apartment, <laughs> you know, every time. And it, it's always the truck that you need is in the bay <laughs> because it's still getting worked on. Yeah. So, um, did that a lot. And I've got boys at home and my wife, And I was out, you know, two weeks at a time a lot. You did a pretty good job of getting me home every time I asked. But there were times, you know, loads cancel or things happen and and you get stuck out. And I was missing a lot 
on top of truck issue after truck issue. And I think at one point we ran out of blue ribbon trucks. So I went into another BCL oh, oh, truck, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the white yes. I forgot about that. It wouldn't, when I got into it, it wouldn't go into 10th gear <laughs> and <laughs> halfway through the week or however long I needed it, it wouldn't stay in ninth gear. <laughs> so among the things I'd accumulated were bungee cords. <laughs> then it started using all this coolant, didn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, that's... well, he knew that, the, the BC yeah. on it, because he had gallons of coolant in there. Just yeah, his coolant mileage was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also remember that you were, I don't think you were prepared for the, the idea that when you went home on the weekend, you really weren't home. No, yeah, that's right. Because yes. there was truck maintenance and stuff. Thank that, you for reminding me that. Yeah, because that, that had a lot that, to do with it. Yeah, yeah. It I remember you saying that, look, mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock on Friday night, I'm really not mm -hmm. home. I'm mm -hmm. here, but I'm yeah. not really here. Yeah. And I think that that <clears> wasn't I, – I just don't think you had processed that part of it yet. I, um, I was thinking ahead of it, when I did own a truck, I would still need to work pretty hard to, to make enough money. But when I get home, I don't get to turn the key off and go home and spend right, time right. Yeah, with right. the family. I've <clears> got to get the truck fixed or I've got to do this or that. Um, and on top of swapping trucks, on top of having to bungee cord the Peter build into ninth gear <laughs> so I could run <laughs> 60 miles an hour at 1930 yeah but and then you, know, you and then you put me in a 2016 automatic kenworth <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back but, but I, I i think seth you'll probably agree with this though but i think a lot of people that come here because they get exposed to what it's really like to own a business you know mm -hmm. and i don't think there's any way that people really understand that until they're put in this position and which is part of the reason why there is a a high failure rate in in this business is because you know they you come to it with the experience of being a company driver and just driving a truck mm -hmm. no responsibility really no right. risk you come here and you find out that wait a minute this is a whole different thing you know uh, i don't go home at five o'clock and forget about the truck right. if it's my truck i gotta get it worked on right. i gotta do this or i gotta do that so i think that oh that that awareness is just something that you never prepare yourself for mm -hmm. till you're into it and I think at that point in time, I think you questioned if this is really, it wasn't necessarily the program or Landstar. Oh, no, not at all. It was really, are you really, is this the, 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 is this the route that you want to choose mm -hmm. to pursue? Mm -hmm. Because it's different than what you thought it was going to be. Would right. Be a fair statement. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't you guys and it wasn't Landstar. And in fact, I came to uh, Blue Ribbon from, a company out of Charlotte, North Carolina, that was dedicated. I was there a couple of years and I was real familiar with the way they operated. It was all dedicated loads. So I got to know my customers. It was really similar to your wind core loads. It was all windows. Yeah. Um, and they had opened up, they had acquired atrium windows out of welcome, North Carolina, which was about 30 minutes from the house. And I saw it pop up around the time I was really struggling with, do I want to continue this path of truck ownership and have this be my 24 seven for the foreseeable future? Or do I want to make a change? And I saw that they had opened that facility up and I thought, man, I, I know these people, I know these routes, I know what I'm doing. It's not a whole lot. In fact, at, at that time it was more money than what I was making because it was dedicated and they had that contract for eight. And they said you would leave out Monday mornings and you could get home Thursday evenings, sometimes Friday afternoon, every single week. I thought, man, that's really, really tempting uh, to be set up to that schedule because not only did you not know when you were coming home because of low cancellations or truck breakdowns, it was really hard to plan any kind of family time around that stuff. You know, you would, I missed, birthdays i miss vacations you know things we'd plan for a weekend trip would just fall apart because you're stranded a thousand miles from home because a truck broke down or a load canceled and i knew that wouldn't be an issue with this company yeah. because if you if one of the tr trucks broke down you know they were contracted through or at least through penske you know and they would come pick you up and bring you wherever you needed to go 
and it was something that I could schedule life around. Yeah. And that was very appealing because it was so familiar. I don't think that I would have let you guys know that I was going to make a change and quit the program if that wasn't an option. Well, and there were, there's so many extenuating circumstances. We had this, we had this 2010 Cascadia that we had gotten as a, an experiment Mm -hmm. that would, that was actually going pretty well. And that almost as a reward for being, you know, the, the golden boy, we put you in that truck. And then that went to hell in a handbasket. The, the 2016 Kenworth no, was the no, reward, the, right? No, I'm talking about Margie. The That's the truck I started in. Yeah. But, but what I, mm-hmm. what I mean is we were, we were, we were looking at you taking that truck over and you named it, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and that's where things kind of got derailed because this truck, was going to be like $20,000 to fix. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, no. And so we had, we were in that summer having to make a bunch of difficult decisions and you were such a good team guy, you know, that Mm -hmm. we probably abused you a little bit, you know, because we knew (laughs) you would, you would take care of things and, Mm -hmm. and make great money for the truck. So, so you made that fateful decision and, um, which was, and I, I got to tell the story of the night that you, that you were leaving because you were, you were delivering in West Harbor Freight, right? Mm-hmm. In West yeah. Virginia. And one of the other guys calls me and he's broke down on the West Virginia turnpike. And mm-hmm. I was coming from Fayetteville. So I was coming and you were, you were headed that way. And I couldn't really tell what was going on. And I'm like, well, you know, Seth is close. I'm like, well, will you run over there and, 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 and have a look? And, so we both all converge mm-hmm. on the side of the interstate pretty much at the same time. And I get there and I'm horrified because he's pulled over on the shoulder and the truck looks mm-hmm. like it's about mm-hmm. to fall over. <clears throat> and what had happened is a, a fan belt had come off. And so he was climbing a big hill and he didn't have a fan and it overheated. So he pulls over. Well, then he sits there like this for so long that all the fuel runs from one take into the other and now it won't start. So we back Seth's bobtail up beside <laughs> We're on the shoulder. We've got two trucks side by side. And somehow, by some miracle, I found a little pump deal, you know, and we're trying to pump fuel from one truck into the other to get it started. <laughs> we finally get all that done. So he leaves and you go and we're like, okay, well, we're sad. You know, we're just, we're just destroyed because you're, you're gone. Right. And then what was it about two weeks later? Uh, you call and you needed a three-way conference call with Larry. Mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us about that little nightmare? <laughs> so I went, I went through the entire hiring process of this other company. Did everything that I need to do. I was just, they had given me a start date and this, I think it was the, it was the drug alcohol clearing house. I think something had happened around that time where it was mandatory for everybody to go um, submit their information to that clearing house. And I and the government always does a really good of job course of implementing they do. Systems. And there was a problem in one state with that information, and that happened to be the state I lived in, in North Carolina. And they couldn't they couldn't pull any of my information up from that drug and alcohol clearinghouse, so they couldn't go through with the hiring process. And this went on for a little bit, and it got to the point where they're this company is saying this is on the state, and I would call and you know, you call the state and it's a, not a quick, <laughs> you don't get anybody <laughs> yeah. quick. It's hours of, of being on hold and transferred. And you finally get somebody and like, well, every bit of your information looks good on our end. It's gotta be the company. <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me. So I can't, I can't drive until my information is verified in this. And at this time I've resigned from blue ribbon and technically Landstar. And this other company can't hire me because this information can't be verified. So they're saying you can't, you won't be able to drive until this is figured out. I'm like, well, how long is this going to take to get figured out? Like, well, we don't know because we don't know what the problem is. So that's when I needed a conference call with you guys to explain what was going on and see if there was any way possible that I would be able to come back and, and drive for Blue Ribbon and Larry having the name that he does in Landstar made a handful of phone calls called in every favor. He said yeah, he, he sure did. Um, and pretty much got it back into Landstar system. Like I never left. 
and I was able to come back on and, and start driving. And I think that little short break of not knowing if I was even going to be able to drive a truck or have a job again there for, because when you don't, when you don't know if you can drive a truck after driving for years and seeing the potential for that income, and you start thinking about the odd and end jobs that you need to start looking for. Yeah. And you're looking on indeed and Craigslist and Facebook. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. this is a deep well. Yes. Yeah. It, it kind of changed my perspective on things a little bit. And I realized that maybe this rough patch that I was going through would be worth sticking out a little bit longer if the end results do you yeah. care if I share with you? The, you can the say anything you I, want. <laughs> okay. So we get this notice from a, a written notice of resignation from Seth on November 30th, mm. which ironically is my birthday. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Our poster boy is leaving. So, I mean, it, it, it obviously, I mean, it, 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 it it affected me i mean because i mean you know you, you i take things personally i know i teach it, y'all y'all to do that but i do and i'm like well this is a this is a slam to me you know and and even though he says it's not which i appreciate that but i'm like well i have failed him somehow there's something that i could have done that would have kept him from making this decision so i thought and thought and thought and thought, and thought so i sat there and put this letter together i think that night and send it to you the next day. Do you care if I read it? Oh, go ahead. I said, Seth, it's with great, it's with great sadness that I respond to your letter of resignation. I admit it caught me quite off guard. Although I thoroughly understand the reasons that led to your decision, I have to say that it's still a disappointment to me. In the time that you have been a part of our program, you have mastered the one single skill set that most people in business never do, relationship building. I knew that this ability will work in your favor, whatever arena you choose to be in. But in the owner-operator world, it is very rare. I also am quite appreciative of the fact that at one time you did, all caps, have the entrepreneur bug, air quotes. <clears throat> your comments about turning the truck off when you went home were evidence of some of the criteria that went into the decision that you and Mandy made. It's very true that when you take that leap into being a business owner, the time clock never stops, ever. I also know that the bug doesn't either. Maybe now isn't the time, but with your family's need for you to be home more, um, but someday that bug will bite again. Whatever caused you to pursue it a year ago is still in you. The desire to be in control of your own destiny doesn't just go away. When that desire raises its head. <laughs> Sorry. I would like to encourage you to, to seize the opportunity. The rewards are more than worth the cost of the journey. Sincerely, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so then we have this thing happen, which I think is kind of a divine intervention thing where he couldn't, he couldn't leave. <laughs> he was a hostage. Couldn't leave. Got him right where we wanted. The only way he could drive again was if I could give it, convince Landstar to take him back. And so, um, I thought, wow, this is not going to be easy because he had been gone just long enough. It was like 10 days, wasn't it, Seth? Yeah, I think so. Where they couldn't reverse it in qualifications. Yeah. And Landstar is so good and known for bending, you know, the procedures, you know. It... So um, I'm like, man, this is going to this is going to really be a challenge. And I even brought you in on some of the conversations, you did. didn't I? Yeah. And I finally get I, I don't want to talk about this too much because I, there's some favors that were done for me from people at Landstar that I don't want to put them in a difficult position to, but just let it just be that 
people at Landstar, because of our reputation, uh, because they know how effective our program is, they basically, you know, said, you know what, this really needs to go up to some type of a upper level management decision, but I'm going to keep it here and make this decision myself. And, uh, and it, it worked out. And so he was able to come back. It never, ever left. And, uh, you know, I think it kind of, I think it jolted him enough because, you know, you don't really appreciate what you have till you lose it. And I think when he realized that he was getting ready to lose the opportunity to continue being a driver, uh, it made him rethink. I'm speaking for you now. Yeah. But, but I think it made you rethink the situation. And you're going, you know what? If I'm going to stay a driver, I might as well pursue this this thing. I, again, I'm speaking mm -hmm. for you. You probably should say that. But that's what I was feeling at the time. Yeah. I, that's kind of the way I'm wired. When I'm done with something, I'm done. When I'm in on something, I'm all in. And coming back in, after all of that happened, I was all in. And I wanted to figure out what I needed to do going forward to make it different than it was the previous year. Not, not the way that you guys were running the operation, the way that I was thinking about the operation. I needed to restructure the way that I was thinking about this whole opportunity. And that's what shifted in my mind. And that's, I think, probably what led to kind of where we're at right now. Now, folks, if you think the story has done having twists and turns, we, we're anywhere near done. <laughs> so that was November 30th. All right. And then you get back, what, right after, right right after Christmas? Right after yeah, Christmas. January. How long now is it from then until you killed JPEG? January 19th. January 19th. So everybody knows about Metro, Larry's first truck that he ever bought. Well, we put Seth in it in a uh, fateful January day up in Pennsylvania. I get a phone call. Hey, Seth, is jackknifed. You need to call him. And uh, I called him, and he was a mess. Um, and so uh, JPEG's in a ditch with the cab halfway <laughs> torn off the frame. <laughs> And I thought, how in the hell can things get any worse for this guy? <laughs> um, so I guess kind of take us through that day because I had to come get you. I yeah. came and rescued you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we got to ride the truck for a couple of days while I finished <laughs> my run. Uh, but let, let's talk about that yeah, a little bit. Yeah. After, <laughs> after going through everything in December and Larry sticking his neck out and doing everything he could to get me back on, I thought, how could I repay this man? <laughs> He made me cry again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How could I really touch him deep? <laughs> so I had taken a load into Pennsylvania and I don't remember the town exactly, but it was, near my hoopany. it was, yeah, it was starting to sleet and snow on my way into this receiver and the roads were getting, you know, pretty bad by the time I got there and got empty and there's a little dandy mart a couple miles away. So I get empty and I go park at this dandy mart and I'm pulling up the weather app and it's all small. It's small roads to get out to anything major that would be like cleared off. Coming, right? Oh yeah. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> and this, it was coming by the time it started, because I think I was an hour out when it started. And by the time I got there, there was already a couple inches on the ground and the roads were, were getting pretty bad. So I come out of there empty and I get to this dandy mart and I park and I pull up the weather app. And I think the temperatures for the rest of that day were going to get up above freezing barely. And then there was another big mess coming in. That was another, you know, several inches expected through that night. Yeah. So I thought, well, if I stay here, I'm stuck for a couple of days. If I go now, they've probably got this, you know, some of these roads cleared off good enough to get out to a major highway, which I think was probably 15, 20 miles away. Yeah. So I take off uh, empty. And I'm taking it slow, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour and climbing up some of the hills empty. I'm spinning a little bit and having to back off and get traction. And I peek over a, a small grade and I start to come down the backside. And all of a sudden it just, it's the weirdest feeling to have the truck just start to go sideways <laughs> down the road. And it was, it was slow enough to have several thoughts <laughs> before it was all over. 
So it's a strange feeling when the trailer is ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, I think that's what happens. I, I come up over the top <clears throat> and that trailer starts when it peaks, it starts to push the backside of that tractor and it just pushes the drives out a little bit. And once it starts, there's no way to stop it. And I'm thinking, I just, I just got back. <laughs> I just got back yeah. and I'm in Larry's truck and everybody knows about Larry's truck. <laughs> And everything it's been through and the flagship yeah. of blue ribbon logistics right. fleet. Okay. Right. I mean, it's on, it's on the website. It is the truck. <laughs> so it's a little, you know, it's a little two lane Pennsylvania highway and I, mm. I jackknife it and block both lanes and it, I guess it does enough damage to, I mean, it's, it's done. So I have to call Larry <laughs> And let him know what I've done after all the help that he's given. And I don't, honestly, I don't remember a whole lot of that conversation or an hour or so after that, because that's the first time I've ever been in an accident like that. And it wasn't high speed and it wasn't like I was afraid for my life, but I mean, he jackknife a truck. Um, That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. And so I had to call Larry and let him know what happened. Of course, he wants to know if I'm okay and he doesn't didn't seem concerned at all for the truck. Want to make sure I was okay. Nobody else was involved. Everybody else was okay. And I don't remember if you called me mm-hmm. shortly after or not. I think you did yeah. to try to assess the truck and whether or not it was drivable, which it wasn't. So I blocked this road for a couple hours as tow trucks come out and try to get everything swung around. And we also got intimately acquainted with the, tow system in pennsylvania yeah don't ever reckon <clears throat> ever. ten thousand ten thousand dollars to haul it how many what, how far was it? 15 miles yeah yeah and the guy thought he was <clears throat> doing us a favor like he was really yeah because really I, I called him i said look hey, hey oh, I'll, I'll take care of you don't worry i'll take care of you ten thousand dollars later <laughs> like dude i'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> i didn't pitch you off you know <laughs> <clears throat> yeah and, and told me when i went up there to get the trailer well, hey, listen, if this other guy to come down and wrap, wrap, he'd really screwed you. I'm thinking, and you didn't? But anyway. And on top of that, a little sidebar here, you know, the insurance company was, supposed to, was going to pay the tow bill. Well, he, we were trying to get the truck out of this storage lot to mitigate the storage charges. And he threw a big fit because the insurance company hadn't sent he hadn't received the check yet. You know, this is the guy's going to work with us, okay? He's going to work yeah. with us. So we, I sent Chris up there to get the truck, and then he won't give him the truck, you know? So we have to pay for the truck. The trailer. I had to pay. He wanted the trailer. Well, yeah, he, yeah, wanted, yeah. he said, if you pay half of the bill, and I'm I'll thinking, let you have the trailer. Seen, we're I've trying not these, to lose the trailer. I've seen these record bills. Yeah. We might have to pay a grand. Yeah. So I said, we're going to have pay, to pay $1,200. Yeah. That somebody pay, pay, hands pay, me yeah, a $10,000 bill. Ten. I called Larry. <laughs> I'm like, we, we ain't paying half this bill. I got, I got, listen, I got this guy on the phone. And I, uh, anyway. Now, let me fill in a few gaps here in this in this store right here, okay? Because once we heard that he jackknifed, okay? Now, you know, I, I once I knew he was safe and nobody else was involved and it was what it was, I'm starting to start, you know, I'm, I'm starting to put together the game plan, all right? And I'm thinking, well, God, I just used every penny of capital that I had ba- saved up at Landstar to keep his ass here, Okay. <clears throat> and he also, in the previous year, he had had a couple of tickets. Or, um, did uh, he have a no, ticket no tickets. A, no, a no, backing no. incident? Back uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so there's a couple yeah. of safety related issues that had occurred here before. And I'm thinking, after all that work that I did, you know, and all the, the, the capital that I spent to keep him here, you know, I said, there's no way. Mm-hmm. They're not, you know, he's been here barely a year and he's totaled a truck. Mm-hmm. You know, jackknifed it, you know, I'm thinking there's not any way. So here's another mm-hmm. long, what? two? To, weeks, yeah. At least, you know, and they but, let him keep driving. I, we put him in another truck, but we kept driving and we're thinking, <laughs> when is, you know, he's got this noose around his neck. Yeah, when when are we going to know whether they're going to you know, flip the switch or not? So it was like the longest two weeks in the world, you know, and, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not really wanting to push safety because I don't really, first of all, I really don't want her to answer. And he's still driving, you know, and, and the next thing is, well, if I piss him off, then all they're going to do is say, well, he's gone. You know? yeah. So I'm trying to walk this fine line between let's get in an, there. And I finally just called her and talked to, I think it was Tracy. Or, and I said, look, I said, 
you're killing this guy. <laughs> I see he's like on death row and he never, he doesn't know when the execution date's going to be, you know, let's just come to a decision, you know? And she goes, well, I understand that. And you know, of course, at the same time, on the other side of my mouth, I'm saying, come on now, this, this is a, this is the best guy I've got. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm begging for his mercy and everything. Well, finally the, 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 the verdict, can it come out on a Friday? Sounds right. And, yeah. uh, and, and they say, well, and I think I think I got a call um, from a second tier person and take and, and safety and going, well, you know, we reviewed all this and da 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 da. And we decided that again, since he's in a program like yours, that we're gonna we're gonna let him stay. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so um, he survives, you know, uh, the life, uh, cat's life number two. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah. <clears throat> I think it was Tracy that called me and said, I've, yeah. I've have been waiting to be able to call you. And I'm so happy to be able to say, yeah, I, 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 too, and I, I felt really bad for him because I'm thinking, you know, after all this, I've never known of anybody to survive a wreck, you know, with Lane Star. Mm-hmm. You have a wreck. You're just done. You <laughs> we, we got a comment. That's the first time I've ever seen Seth take his hat off. I, and and I, I think I, th- I was thinking I, that's the first time I've ever seen it. I was always oh. wondering if he's like one of these guys that's bald on top and don't want anybody to see it, you know, <laughs> How many times have you seen me, Leroy? That's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Rocky's saying, was it Seth that jinxed Big Red with the start of that differential set? No, that was that No, was it wasn't guy. Seth. No. Uh, the, one, the one funny story with Seth and Big Red, Rocky, was I had been driving it since we brought it on, you know. And I don't know, I used a thousand bucks a week or something. And for some reason, we had Seth jump in it and Larry about bet a brick. He said, like, Seth, you $1,600 in fuel this week. And I'm like, well, you know, you got to stay out of that throttle. Um, okay, so now. While we- we're talking about Seth giving me a heart attack, you know, we, uh, as you all know, we advocate stacking loads, right? So, oh, and, yeah. and, and back then, I'm booking most of the loads because Chris is still driving full time. So I'm doing most of the load booking at this point in time. So I keep everybody booked out, you know, five, six loads, you know, a week and a half at a time. So we let Seth start booking his own loads. I'm looking up and, you know, we don't have any loads booked. We have nothing booked. I'm, I call Chris and say, Chris, is, is, what the hell's going on with Seth? He doesn't have any loads booked, you know? And, um, you know, he says, well, calm down. I mean, Chris was like, calm down. I'm sure, he, you know, and, and, he, and the, the thing about it is, and, and, and eventually we let Seth teach his method to a couple of our live events because he definitely does it different than I do. But the thing that made it work for Seth is because he had such great relationships with a few agents yeah. that he didn't have to book them in advance. He already knew that the freight was there and he, he just didn't, he scared me by not letting me know that. So, um, you know, all, most of the hair that I don't have anymore, it's his fault. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, I'm like, I like to keep things booked up, you know, and, and, uh, I look up and Seth's got nothing on our board, nothing. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, but, and even now, I mean, you know, Seth's one of these guys that if he was were to get back in the truck, you know, Seth could, Seth could, could, um, uh, you know, he could book himself out and never touch the load board. You know, he has that kind of relationship with his agents and that's what makes him, you know, that's why he's going to be such a star in this business. Well, it didn't, it didn't start out that way when you guys turned me loose and allowed me to start booking my loads in January of 2020. I tried to stack myself up, you know, for the first little bit. And it was, it was shortly after that where I would complete some loads and the agents would say, Hey, great job. If you need anything in this area again, let me know. Right. And it was, it wasn't long after that where I didn't, they would say, we have these loads coming out of here on these days um, and we'll let you know what we've got then. So there was no reason to stack because I, I would be in a certain area and know who had what at what point, And they were communicating with me, um, where I would have nothing on a, on a Friday for next week. <laughs> and I know that you were looking at that next week, wondering what I was going to do. And by, by the end of the day, Friday or the first half of Monday, yeah. um, oh with a few phone calls from some, some agents, it would be that week could be filled up pretty quick. Um, yeah. and I, I don't think it took very long. Well, he was the first $10,000 guy, you know, yeah. it, 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 it just consistently, mm-hmm. even as, you know, as the market started to recover in May and June of 2020, 
um, you know, he started banging out consistently 8,000, 8,500, nine, nine, and sitting 10,000. And then he got to the point, even just a few weeks ago when he was still driving, he could bang out $10,000 in four days and go home. Mm -hmm. And he's home every weekend. He's home every weekend. That, yeah, that changed when I, when I bought the truck from you, I tried, I wanted to continue to do the best that I could for you when you own the truck and I would still try to run five loads a week, but still do my best to get home as early as possible. And a lot of times that was Saturday morning, midday, Saturday. And when you're gone all week and you have a day and a half at home over a weekend, it goes real fast. You know, as soon as you get there, that clock is ticking yeah. when you know you have to leave Monday morning and you really have to spend almost a whole day doing laundry and grocery shopping and prepping. So you have a half a day to try to squeeze in everything. And With he's got a couple of teenage guys that are very active in sports. And so, you know, he's missing all these mm -hmm. activities that, you know, I mean, he, you only get to do that once, you know, so get that. I got to tell another story about him now, because like I said, his way of, of booking things was so different than ours that we wanted him to teach that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I put him on the program at, at our second live event. Okay. And uh, I'm not, I mean, I've been talking all day. I'm tired of talking. So I sort of like, check out when when seth gets ready to do his thing and i glance up there in his first slide the name of his program is something about picking your loads or something picking like right <laughs> picking right picking i look up there in his title slide he's got some dude and he's knuckled deep in his nose picking his nose okay and i'm, and I'm like well I, now we got a sense of humor i didn't even know about you know so it was very hilarious i guess you had to be in there so. i was trying to find that but it's, uh, I can find it pretty quickly if you want. It's it's in. Well, I, I can. I can well, find. while you're looking for that, the tow truck story re reminded me of another tow truck story <laughs> when Good. I was in the Cascadia, and this was part of what had kind of led up to me being wondering if I was wanting to continue with the program. Um, I'd never been up 48 hours straight in my life until I came to Blue Ribbon <laughs> in, in Landstar, um, and that was in a well when the doser valve went out or got clogged up oh, in that yeah. Cascadia and shut down on me. It, I'm a light sleeper. And if I, if I know that I've got to drive through the night and I have to sleep through the day, it's real hard to do. So <laughs> you found it. So I it's was in, it's on my desktop. How can I get it to you? Is it on this desktop? Yeah. Yeah. Go to, uh, go to seminars and inside seminars, go to slideshows. And it's the title slide. Okay. All right. Keep, keep talking. Yeah. So you had booked me some loads that I knew I was going to have to try to get some sleep during the day and drive at night for a couple nights. Um, and I just couldn't, I, I laid there for hours and hours and hours and stared at the top bunk. And it's like noon, one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. And finally it gets time to roll. And I hadn't slept at all through the day. So I thought, well, I'll just, you know, I'll be able to make it a couple nights and get back on day schedule. Well, I got my load picked up and, uh, the Cascadia shut down, I had to get it towed to uh, Jeffersonville, Ohio, TA. We got towed over there and, and stood in a bay for a while with that tech trying to figure out what was going on. They couldn't figure it out. So you guys made the decision to tow it back to Hurricane. All so wow. Carl was saying, just tell them clean that just dose valve. Clean it yep. up, just, valve. Just, right. just tell them clean that dose valve and it'll be fine. And of course, they've got it plugged into their computer and the computer's not saying that, yeah. so they don't listen. Um, yeah, the, the non-certified, non-factory guy that – Nobody will hire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we get a, they hire a tow truck to come pick up me and the truck and get it towed back to Herkin. <laughs> and uh, so on the way, it's going to be early, late night, early morning before the Cascadia gets back to Western Branch with me and the tow truck driver. And I asked the tow truck driver, like, you know, they've got a room a couple miles down the road for me. Would you be able to drop me off after we drop the truck off? He's like, yeah, sure. No problem. So by the time we get there and do all that stuff, it's been, I've been up really close to 48 hours. So Chris gets the tow bill <laughs> while I'm still with the tow truck driver and he's going back and forth, I guess. I, I didn't oh, hear it. it, it didn't so, well. yeah. So really it, it, long story short, the tow truck driver says, well, I guess your boss got on my boss and now I can't take you to the hotel. So, <laughs> and it's winter and it's freezing and it's like one, one AM in 
Charleston outside Western Branch. And he said, I just, you know, I can't, my boss isn't gonna let me take you over to the hotel. So he leaves and the Cascadia won't run, it won't idle, so it won't stay warm. And I've got my bags outside <laughs> and I've never used Uber before in my life. So I'm having to try to download the app and try to figure out if I can get to this hotel. So finally make it over there. And I think I get there a couple hours before I actually have to check out. Or I called the hotel actually and said, can I cancel this reservation? I'm not going to be there in time. I said, no, it's already paid for and it's too late. So I get an Uber over there and I'm there for a few hours before I have to check out. But it was just it stuff like that <laughs> had, had been Isn't going on. I blew Western, uh, the Detroit shop. Something about and you're going to take Seth to the hotel? Or... No, that was a different. That was, okay, that was okay. a different. Okay. Oh yeah, that that was a different explosion okay. on Detroit shops. All right. Um, I was trying to the 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 screen share thing's not set up, and it's so just take a word for it. His PowerPoint was hysterical. <laughs> um. Well, you know that that story though illustrates. You know, we talk so much about problem solving you know, and being able to deal with these problems as they come. And so many people that become owner operators, you're going to experience a breakdown. You're going to experience dealing with a tow company. You're going to walk through that stuff. And that's why we do this is to try to give people a taste of it now so that, you know, cause we're, we're unfazed mm -hmm. by this stuff anymore. Right. You know, and that's, you know, part, Part I think part of your early struggle was partly my fault because I just look at something and say, well, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So I just expect everybody else to be able to do it. You know, um, one thing that really helped me was being here where the mechanics were, you know, on the weekend, I could toss my keys yeah. to somebody. You didn't have that at, near, near home. Mm -hmm. And that, that didn't help your situation either. So you got to, you bought your truck in what, June? June. Mm -hmm. So you bought your truck in June and it is now March. Um, who, I don't know whose idea was first to buy the other two. Was, was that a mutual, did y'all come to that together or how, how did that go down? I think we were both thinking the same thing, Yeah, but hadn't really had a conversation about it. Well, he we, expressed a desire that he wanted to be home yeah. more. Mm -hmm. And we already had talked about the fact that that was his, you know, his, he had come up with the idea that he wanted to be a fleet owner and dispatch trucks and not be a driver. So, you know, um, I've got a couple of trucks that I'm ready to not have anymore. And, you know, we just put uh, the deal together and it was just a natural thing for, for both of us. It was again, well, yeah. I think, uh, another one of those win-win situations, but, uh, now he's been able to, you know, and Seth's such a good, he's so good with money that he doesn't have to have a three or four thousand dollar a week income by driving a truck. Right. As a BCO, he could he could he would rather be home and make less money but be home. Yeah. And so having three trucks gave him the income that he needed. And um, we're in this we're in this ready to transition because I'm home full time and I'm the fleet manager watching over everything, but with 12 trucks, we're getting mm -hmm. right to the edge of what I can handle. Right. Yeah. You know? And that, and that, so backing up a little bit from the, the three trucks, and even prior to buying my first truck in June, you called me one day, Chris, and said, Hey, we're thinking of this idea of bringing on some other trucks onto the fleet um, that other BCOs already own. And if that happens, it's going to get big enough to where I won't be able to do it on my own. I might need some help. Would you be interested and doing that and after being after the the ordeal in december and then the ordeal in january <laughs> twice they're thinking that i wasn't uh, going to be employed there for a while um i knew that i wanted to own a truck but i also knew that what you guys had taught me and the links that you had gone through to save my butt a couple times i wanted to own a truck but i didn't want to leave yeah, because I was I had bought in to the program, and the experiences that I had throughout my trucking career, I wanted to be able to help other people have that experience, and I liked the idea of of staying on. So I wanted to own a truck, but I also want to be a part of Blue Ribbon. 
so I, I had expressed that to the both of you, I think one day on a, a three-way call mm-hmm. and Larry had said, that's interesting. Let me think about how that would work and I'll get back with you. Well, and we also talked about this in your and Mandy's hotel room after the first live event. Mm-hmm. Then we kind of start talking about. Yeah, but this, this, the conversation that led up to that event had yeah. already taken place between the three of us. Cause that's, that's when true. you had, had thought about it for a while and, right. and had come right. up with uh, a way to make that work where I could still be a truck owner, but also part of blue ribbon. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, and again, th- this is a, uh, a twist in our business model that we really didn't anticipate that you or anyone would come here. And after, you know, the year and a half or however long you, takes to get ready to, to go buy a truck that you would buy the truck and then keep it here. You know, we, we just didn't expect that. And, um, and so it, it, uh, I, I just, I, I listen, I guys, I, I'm humbled by this podcast thing. I'm humbled by, you know, guys as, 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 uh, with the character of Seth and of Chris that, you know, that want to, to stay in this blue ribbon thing and, and, and not leave, you know, and that, that just, I can't, express to you how you know flattered i am that 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 happens but the other thing about this that i think is so great is that it's it's beyond me i mean yeah, it, it was my idea and i you know I, I thought this would work but now with with guys like chris and seth here you know it it it, it now takes on its own its own life you know and and it it, it will grow now much 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 bigger bitter bigger and better than it would have with me and uh, because it attracts these quality individuals, you know, and uh, I want to thank you for putting your trust in me and you and Chris both. And um, I just want to, uh, you know, tell you that uh, I, I certainly won't let you down, you know. Well, you've, you've proven that time again. That was never, I was never concerned with being let down by Larry Long. I knew that wasn't, that wasn't going to happen. So now with basically the three of us in uh, operations and management, um, it's really opened us up now to have probably a capacity of 20 or 25 trucks. So whether it's BCOs being mentored, whether it's people in the program, truck owners, we really have a good foundation now to really build the fleet up um, because we have the operation support to do it you know i'm i'm watching over everything you're dispatching your trucks you're backing me up larry's doing all of the accounting and and, and keeping all the money straight which is i'm glad he's doing it because i sure as hell don't want to do it um but it's uh it's just fascinating how this thing has grown um in a couple of years uh to be what it is now and um i'm just i'm just blown away you know that that it's come to this point and we can, we can provide this opportunity for these guys, mm-hmm. you know, and I, cause I was so lost as a BCO. I, it's a miracle that mm-hmm. I lasted as long as I did. I, you know, I look back at it and it terrifies me to think of, I was just out there by myself, you know, just, yeah. you know, and, and here you have this support system that really helps you, uh, navigate the terror that can come with all of the things that get thrown at you. It's, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine because I doing research on my own as a company driver, I knew that Landstar was, had a big draw that if you wanted to own a truck, that was probably the best place to be. And I can't imagine going through that whole process of coming on and having to learn that and do all that on my own without the knowledge that the two of you were just constantly feeding into me. I don't know that I would have made it a year. I probably would have been part of that statistic um, of failure with truck owners. But I remember when you called me, Chris, and told me that you guys had come up with this other program. I think there was maybe only four or five trucks at the time. You're like, this, you know, this has the potential to be, you know, within a year we could have 10 trucks or so. And here we are now and it's, we're at 12 trucks and going to be 15 here shortly, you know, we're, we're sitting here experiencing and, and living 
what was discussed a year ago, you know, it, it, it worked and it was successful and there's people that are benefiting from that. And that's just, I love being a part of that. Well, and people ask me, uh, you know, especially people that I know that aren't in, at Landstar, I mean, other business people that I know, and their questions are, well, you know, you're doing great, but how, what's the growth? I mean, how do you grow this? And, you know, I mean, I, I, I tell them that, look, we, we're attracting a lot of people who want to be in the program. You know, the podcast is, is providing us with a, a quantity of good quality applicants that we can afford to, you know, to um, be careful and pick people that we think are going to be good in the program. But as Chris said, you can only manage so many people. And the last thing we want to be is a big fleet with a 45 truck load or a dispatch board where nobody gets any help. You know, that's not what we're about here. And so we have to keep our dispatch ratio has to be very, very, you know, um, small. You know, I'm, I, we're thinking five to one, you know, is kind of where we want to be. Well, it, it, we, we keep getting trucks because we get more and more people that want us to operate their trucks. We keep getting driver applications, but what we don't keep getting or, you know, what we haven't so far is getting other Seths who want to come on here and become fleet owners and dispatchers and things like that. So, and, you know, everybody can't do this, you know, and everybody's not cut out to, to number one, to dispatch and number two, to um, be in a, a position of leadership uh, where other people are dependent on you. That, that takes a special quality. You know, it takes somebody like Dave Ramsey says that has a heart of a teacher and, uh, and, and, and will put the, the, you know, the needs of other people ahead of themselves. And so, um, you, you know, I'm certainly not going to hire that person from some big fleet. You know, uh, we, we have a very unique program where you have to f- operate in this program to understand how it works. So now our, you know, uh, I think one of, now that I don't have to manage the fleet from a dispatch standpoint, one of the things that we have to start working on is this uh, internal um, program that, that identifies and helps train our future dispatchers. So we can continue to grow this thing and we can't even come up with a name for them yet. You know, we're, we, we're, we're, we're struggling with, you know, cluster den. Are, are we going to have den mothers and den and, 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 and you know, are we going to have, you know, I, I like cluster, but the problem with that, there's a four letter word that comes after that. I would be so <laughs> tempted to put in there many, many times. And I don't know if that's appropriate you now. Uh, Seth, will you take your cluster screw and go, you know, <laughs> cluster screw. so uh, we're, we're, we're not really sure what gaggle. I mean, you know, I just don't know what that's going to be, you know, but uh, tentacle, uh, but uh, that's not testicle, tentacle. Um, so, um, you know, well, I don't know what's, you know, it, it, we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll figure it out. But, but the, the, the thing is here, we have, we have a wonderful opportunity to teach people who want to learn how to become successful BCOs in the Landstar system. We, we get, we've proven that. And the reason that we do, reason we have Seth and we've had Carrie and other, because we want to share with you guys what we, you know, what, what has come out of this program. So you can see these success stories. So you don't think it's just snake oil, you know, or, or used car salesman, you know, we have, um, uh, real impact, life changing effect on people, you know, that, that want to put in the work. And when we tell people when they come, we we just finished orientation this weekend. And you know, the, one of the first things I tell them is look guys, this is not going to be easy. It'd be the hardest thing you've probably ever done in your life. Okay. And you're going to want to quit about every 10 minutes for the first 90 days, you know, <laughs> but if, I, we have an audience here, by the way. Um, but you know, if you'll stick with it, I promise you it's worth it, you know, and we have now these proof of concept people and stories that, that, that we can use as illustration. Now our challenge is we got to have this middle management, you know, we've got to have people that can come in here and lead these people, you know, provide them with a above average income by being good dispatchers, but then also inspire them you know, so that they, these other people, this dream of, of being uh, a, a Landstar BCO making 150, 200 grand after expenses is attainable by everybody else. You know, 
So that's what our mission is right now. And that's the reason we have Seth on here tonight is to show you that this does really work. It has happened. It's continued to happen. We got some great people here this weekend, you know, that we're so excited about. And, um, and we've got other people in our program right now that, you know, everybody moves at their own pace here. We don't, we don't have like, you know, steps that you have to be at by three months, you got to be here. And by six months, you got to be here. Everybody comes here and they're in a different position in their life. They're in a different position in their skill set, you know? Um, and so you progress here at your pace, as long as you stay progressing. And, um, so there, we have guys here that are going to, you know, they're going to, um, stick their hand up and go, Hey, I want to be that. I want to be that person, you know? And, um, you know, Seth is, is, of course, is, is setting a high bar because he's um, obviously very, very, very good at uh, these skill sets that we have identified that make this job, um, you know, the, the person in this job successful. So um, anyway, congratulations, Seth. I don't, uh, you know, I, have we talked? With, so now, now Seth has got three trucks. Uh, he's, he works from home. I don't know if he's like me. I don't sometimes don't even get dressed during the day. I just wear my <laughs> T-shirt and my, you know, my raggedy ass pajama bombs. But, um, you know, I don't, nobody knows that except y'all now. So <laughs> it's all secret. Okay. But it's, it's uh, it, it is, it, it, you know, it, it, it is, listen, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge uh, uh, benefit to be able to stay home with your family mm -hmm. and, uh, and still do your job. Another thing good about this is that, look, guys, as long as I've got an internet hookup, all right, I don't have to work from Nicholasville, Kentucky. I can work from West Palm Beach, all right? I can go to, with my family to places, and I'm not tied down. So, you know, the price you pay as a truck driver is a heavy price. But here we have options above that, you know, that are real. We have, we have opportunities that are real. Now, I don't want to turn this into a recruiting thing, but why not? So um, I guess that's kind of what it turned out to be. But listen, we're taking on trucks right now at a faster pace than we're taking on drivers. And for a long time, you guys know you applied and we couldn't even we didn't even respond to your email because we didn't have anything for you. Well, now we've got two or three, you know, potential openings in the next month or so because of trucks that were uh, to Lisa. So, um, we, we do, we have, we have capacity now we could, we, we need three drivers in the next 45 days, you know, yeah. and then we need middle management. Now we're not going to hire that, but we're going to take people who are in the program and uh, let that be a, uh, a, a, uh, a, a career, you know, opportunity for those guys. So, um, I saw this comment here and these are the kind that I love 21 years old because of your podcast. I've learned more listening to y'all than I did in school. I have my CDL. I have my own authority. Y'all have made my dream a reality. Thank you. Well, that's awesome, Caleb. Yeah, I uh, appreciate that. You know, we were we were at uh, BCO Days last week in, in Memphis. <laughs> and I've told Chris this, but I don't think he really – I don't think he really felt it because when, you know, when I was in, uh, I went to BCI does in Vegas and, and, you know, I, we go to different events and, and people see the shirt or they recognize my face from the podcast. And it, 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 it's so, it's just so shocking for strangers to walk up to you and go, Hey, you know, and, and they, they like you're your best friend. You'll have, you have no clue who they are. Okay. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they're getting ready to shoot me. You know, I did not touch your wife. Okay. It wasn't me. <laughs> You know, so um, you just don't know. But it, it's it's so entertaining. And, and, and when you start thinking about it, again, it, it's just so flattering that that you have you can have that kind of effect on other people. And, um, and you know, and, and I mean, all we're doing is what I mean, I'm just doing what I like to do. You know, I'm glad it helps other people. But um, that's not you know that I didn't start this to do that it just worked out that way but but so chris is down here and, and seth they both went to memphis and chris for the first time experienced that you know we had bcos that you know they just walk up and go you know i listen to every one of your videos and i, I don't agree with everything but i, I agree with about 95 percent you know and just things like that that and they're like you know uh what you what what you said has really helped me and so it it just it just solidifies your commitment to continue to do what we do you know, it just, it, it drives it home. So, well, I, I, I thought about that going down, you know, that 
what because he told me that experience. And I had a guy one time, this random dude in a truck stop. I hear my name, and he runs up and he's like, "Man, I, I bought my truck because of you." And it's just it's just weird, right. you know. Mm-hmm. But Larry is so charming and personal. Oh, and well, I have of risk it's <laughs> yes, you know? he is. And, and don't you know it? <laughs> and and I'm and I'm and I'm I'm self conscious because I'm thinking. My, my face is not very welcoming in a room. You know, my, so lots of times my face says something that my, my mouth doesn't actually say. And I'm, you know, I'm like, <clears throat> so sometimes your mouth says exactly what your face says. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't seen that very often. Normally your face and your mouth match yeah. to me, you know. <clears throat> but I, 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 in Memphis, I saw that walking through the room with the both of you. I would see the people look, turn away, and we had a trail again. of yeah. people following us through the trade show. Going, can we just stand yeah. next to you and hear it's you pretty, all talk? Yeah, you know, I, I swear that that's what <laughs> we had there. You know, can we just came around and hear what you the questions you ask? And of course, don't stand back there. Come up here. Let's. <clears throat> and then want... they, and then they saw me get on my hands and knees and pray in front of the TA booth. <laughs> I sent that picture to our favorite TSA at TA here in Hurricane. I texted it to Kristen. I'm like, he's literally on his knees right now in front of the TA people. Uh, begging them. Begging them. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, we've wanted to tell this story for a while. Um, well, I've been begging for 29 months to come on. I don't know what the hold up yeah. was. The <laughs> yeah. only reason he's on is because he's captured yeah. here, okay? Yeah. Uh, everybody remembering. Yeah, we, we've listen. We've got guards on both doors to keep him from leaving. Okay, he's actually handcuffed and chained down in this chair over here. All right, we've got him kidnapped. He can't leave. See his hands? You can't see, but they're flesh-colored handcuffs right around his wrists, right there. It's uh, really difficult to um, really articulate what we're offering, you know. And then. Some people come, the majority of people come and have a good experience, and a few don't, and they're like, oh, my God, get me out of here. I don't, I don't want to do this. It's too hard. And, um, but you are the best example of someone that goes through and really, you know, seizes the opportunity. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't want to scare people away because of my experience letting them know everything that happened to me in that first year is, I mean, that's just part of the story and it has to be told, yeah. but that was also the beginning of the program. Um, yes. and that yeah. was the first, uh, was probably the first person that you've ever really fully dispatched full time. Um, you about him? Y- yeah, him. Chris. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a handful before that you were picking loads for, but I think I, I was probably the, a few up and- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, it was, it was hard and it was difficult, but I don't, it's still going to be, it's going to be really hard when you come on board and do this because things happen. Loads cancel, trucks break down. But I don't think anybody now, two and a half years later, this program is fine-tuned enough where I don't think there's going to be any other blue ribbon program. Someone that comes through that program that's going to have to be in nine, ten different trucks in the first year. I don't think that's just not going to happen. Um, we don't plan on it. Yeah, the, the information that is given – has been streamlined and fine tuned. The orientations go a lot more. <laughs> yeah, they're they're way more smooth than they were from from day one. Yeah, well, it it, it and we refine it as we go. Mm-hmm. Every time we do, yeah, yeah, it changes. Um, we do one, we we get a little bit better. But you know, we do thirty day reviews now with people that come in because we hit them in the mouth with so much stuff, and then they leave your shelf shop, and then we go out and. <laughs> put a couple of weeks of loads on them. Then we bring them back mm-hmm. and say, okay. And then they go, Oh yeah. Oh, I get it now. You know? Yeah. Um, it was funny this weekend because we had two guys here for review and I'm up there talking to them and I'm looking at them and I can tell by looking at them that they've never heard what I've said before. Even though I said the same exact same 30 days ago, you know, it's uh, it, but, but, but that's, that's just, that's human nature. We expect that. And there's no way you're going to, you know, I've, I've told this before. I wish we could plug up one of those internet cables from my ear to their ear yeah. and just download the information. But, you know, obviously that well, we, doesn't work. Know, I don't know if you know that we do have podcasts that, that, <laughs> that, you know, we, we talk about. Stuff. I heard. So I hear, you know, but, uh, 
you know, it, it, look, it, yes, this is hard, but business is hard. Well, all we are is a microcosm of business, okay? And the thing that we do here is, first of all, we hold you accountable. And for some people, that's scary, okay? We do not let you pass the blame. You have to accept the blame. We had one guy said, every time y'all do something, y'all make it my fault. Chris says, well, it is your fault, you know? Um, yeah, but I mean, we're, we, listen, we don't let you pass, you know, look, so, but that's, but that's the thing that drives people out of this business is because they fail it. Nobody fails as no owner operator because they can't back the truck up and hit a dock. Nobody. Okay. Nobody fails because they can't shift gears. All right. What they fail at is. C uh, controlling cost, you know, running the business from a business standpoint. And that's what we teach here. We teach it at a high level because we have you for a year and a half and we want to wax on, wax off at the highest level so you get the most experience. That doesn't mean that when you leave here, you have to continue at that level, but that's the best lesson we can give you is to give you, give it to you in the most intense way. And that way you get the experience. You know, so uh, plus, I mean, he, look, we want you to come here and make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Our top guy last year was one hundred eight thousand dollars. OK, driving a company truck with no risk. All right. At Landstar Holland drive van general freight. The truck owner made sixty thousand dollars. Blue Ribbon made sixty thousand dollars. OK, everybody won. And this guy got an education. And got paid one hundred eight thousand dollars for the education. I don't know. Tell me I'm stupid, but that's not a bad deal. I don't think, you know, so. Um, but we have to do it this way in order for you, number one, to have the income, you know, because you're coming here and you're basically taking a master's course in college and you're working a full time job at the same time. OK. And so that's hard to do it. You know, you 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 um you don't have, we had one guy that says, dude, all I do here is, is drive, eat and crap, you know? And I'm like, good. That's what you're supposed to be doing here, you know? And so, um, but I mean, you know, look, it, it's, uh, we, we don't, we, people leave, people decide that they don't want to be in this program. It's not so much the program. They just find out in a crash course that they really don't want to be an owner operator. And fortunately, they learn here driving my truck where now they don't have to go file bankruptcy, you know, in order to figure that out. You know, they can just go back and do what they did before. Maybe they come back again, you know, when, they, when they're more mature or ready to do it. All we're doing is pulling the curtain back and let them see how the sausage is made. And we involve them in the making of it. And sometimes they just don't like getting it on their hands, you know, unfortunately. But, um, but that's going to happen anyway, you know. Well, I think we've covered it all. Um, now, we've got Richie in the room, and sometime we'll get him on the podcast for you, but we'll have to have a translator because he's from Florida. <laughs> and uh, uh, Well, we've also, listen, we've all, another aspect of our business that we're, that we're not, you know, that, that we're, we have mentoring and coaching clients. We've got two right now, dude that are killing it, killing it. They own their own trucks. They're, they're Landstar BCOs. They're new, but they hired us to coach them up. They hired Chris to dispatch them. And, and th this is another whole opportunity that we have. Now, we've got some capacity now since we've got Seth to take on a couple more of those. So we've got a couple of uh, vacancies right now in our mentoring coaching uh, you know, side of the business. So if you're new to Landstar or you're thinking about coming to Landstar, you already own your truck, you know, you want some help in getting started and, and getting, you know, getting a run, getting um, off and running on the right foot and making good money and learning the system, let us know. We can help you do that. So now let me, let me give you some, uh, let me give you some information. The, the truck show, the, the Mid-America Truck Show is coming up March 25, 26 in Louisville, Kentucky. If you've never been to one of these, you owe it to yourself to do it. It's Disneyland for truckers, okay? A mm -hmm. uh, lot of information, a million and a half square feet of exhibits 
Um, you know, it, it, it's overwhelming, it actually is what it is. But all the latest technology, all the latest products, everything is there. You can't see it if you wanted to. If you, if you looked at every booth, you couldn't possibly do it in the weekend. But uh, we're going to be there. So we're going to spend Friday back in the West Wing around uh, the Pittsburgh Power, the MD alignment, those, that area back there. I don't have the numbers in front of me because I'm not at home. Uh, we'll, they have. And I put it on our – if you go to www.blueribbonlogistics.com, I posted it there. So we're going to be, we're going to spend Friday back there. I'm going to be in the OPS part of Pittsburgh Powers booth for a while. Uh, we're going to hang out there, and on Saturday we're going to be in the Landstar booth. So if you want to come up and say hi, or whatever, meet us, talk to us, or whatever, uh, meet Seth, congratulate him. We'll be there, and uh, we would love to have you guys stop by. Okay. So um, other than that, anything else we need to announce? Remember, we do have a couple three openings so if you've thought about doing this or you think you want to do this we now have if Seth hasn't terrified you out of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we now have uh you know some uh, some growth opportunity here in the next month and a half so um anyway um seth you got anything to say with no i think i've used up all my words for march and we still have a truck show to go to this <laughs> month so we have to slow down a little bit we had a we had a comment on here i think uh said that you need to calm down yeah uh, calm down so <laughs> um so yeah well that's it so we will see you at the truck show uh friday near ops and pittsburgh power saturday in the landstar booth uh we're gonna try to get a couple of our mentoring clients on here before the truck show yeah we're gonna try to have one more podcast and let you guys meet our, our mentoring clients and hear their story so uh again if you you're landstar and you you're struggling <laughs> Uh, and now look, I'm going to tell you this to you. Okay. Cause you know us, we don't really keep things back. If you send us a form saying you want help and you're a BCO at Landstar I know where this is headed. and you tell us in that form, listen, I really want to do the volume that you guys do, but I don't want to run the East coast. I don't want to run new England. I don't want to run the West coast. I don't want to run. Don't bother. Okay. Because we don't have secret freight. We just teach you how to be more efficient running the freight that you're probably running right now. So it's not, you're not, we have no secrets to divulge here other than we're going to teach you how to be more efficient with your time, control cost. Uh, oh, by the way, fuel's like $5 a gallon, okay? All you guys are freaking out. I'm loving this. I hope it gets to $10 a gallon. And if you don't understand that, Pull us to the side at the, at the truck show and ask us how to explain that to you. Okay. To Relax. Okay. That's what the fuel surcharge does, but you got to get decent fuel mileage or it doesn't matter. Okay. So anyway, y'all have a good one. We'll see you in, uh, in March 25th, 26th. Okay. See y'all next time. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>